highly probable that thanks to the previous video, you know more about layer styles and filters than you did at the outset of the chapter. Now to strengthen what we've already picked up, we're going to create a style befitting of this image and apply it to the text we created in the previous chapter, as well as the shape of a bird and indeed everything else that we need to get done inside this video using layer styles. So let's start off by making sure you've got the London Zoo layer active and when we created it in the previous chapter we went ahead and added the correct font and made it the right size so we don't have to worry about any of that as the placement and basic appearance of it looks good we want to jazz it up a little and we often when we want to jazz something up use layer styles. So come up here to the effects panel and go ahead and click the layer styles icon to make sure that's what we're seeing in the previews below. Now there's no secret recipe for making good looking styles. It really does just come down to experience. The more you play around with the various styles, the more familiar you'll be with them and the more creative you'll be able to be. So it all comes down to trial and error and if something looks good, keep it. If it doesn't look good, then delete it and try again. That's probably the best advice I can give you, as basic as that may seem. Now, I'm going to be going through these at a fair pace, but that's because I've already rehearsed what I'm going to do. If I came in here without any ideas, I'd be messing around for a while and you'd get bored and I'd get frustrated and it'd probably all end in tears. So that's why I've decided to plan ahead and I'd recommend you do the same with your projects where possible as well. So the first style that I want to add is going to be the drop shadow. So as I said, make sure the layer is active and that we're viewing the drop shadows in the effects panel. And I want us to go ahead and choose the third option, which is called high, and then double click it to apply it to the layer and we'll get this effect. So we're using the shadow to increase the contrast now between the text and the background, meaning that we're making the text stand out more than it was previously. Next up, I want to add a bevel effect to the letters, and that's going to give it a 3D volumetric look. So choose bevels from the drop down menu, and I want us to select the third and last option, which should be simple sharp outer. Double click it to apply it to the letters, and you'll see if we zoom in, we've now got a sculptural effect added to the text itself. So let's zoom out again because I think the effect is good, but the lightness and darkness of the bevel is just a bit too much. So to counteract that, I'm going to add a stroke. And I could do that by coming up to the effects panel and choosing stroke from the drop down menu in order to see the stroke styles that are available to me. And by the way, I'll stay zoomed in to something like 200% so we get a great view of the text we're working with. Always a good thing to do. Now instead of adding a predefined stroke, I'm going to just create one from scratch by coming down to the layer in the layers panel and then double clicking the little FX icon to open up the layer style settings dialog box. And now you can see both the drop shadow and bevel effect along with their respective settings. And then down at the bottom, we can turn the stroke option on. And then all I want us to do is increase the size of the stroke to five pixels and then click the swatch to set the color. And the color I'm gonna go for is a red value of 18 and a green value of 18 and then a blue value of 17 to give us a fairly dark gray color. I'll click okay to accept those color values. And I'm liking that a lot actually, it looks really good. One last thing I want to change as far as this effect goes is the size of the bevel. And I'm not loving the fact that we can see a tiny white fringe around the stroke. So I'll reduce the size of the bevel and I'll go for a value of two pixels and that looks great. Now just in case you were thinking, hey Matt, the stroke is now covering the bevel effect so it's pointless having the bevel there at all. Well, if I turn it off, you'll see the incredible difference it makes to have it as part of our effect. And I'll turn it back on again and I'm happy. So I'll click OK to accept all the changes inside the style settings dialog box. Now let's zoom back to 100% so we can clearly see both the title text and the subtitle text at the same time. 
And by the way, 100% view size is always going to be the best view to get a good feel for what's going on inside the image. And by far the most accurate view for seeing how things will look once they're saved out for the web or printed using your local inkjet printer. So there's a couple of things we still need to get done inside this video and that's to add a hard drop shadow to the subtitle text and then copy the styles we've set for the title text into the bird shape layer. I'll make a start with the subtitle text by first of all making sure it's active in the layers panel and then choosing the drop shadows from the effects panel and the one we want is going to be the second style aptly named hard edge. So go ahead and double click it to apply it to the layer and we're all done. It's as easy as that, eh? Finally, let's copy the title text style over to the bird by activating the title text layer and then coming up here to the layers menu, coming down to layer styles and choosing to copy layer styles. Now let's activate the bird shape layer and then come back up to the layers menu select layer styles once again and then choose paste layer styles and that goes ahead and copies the styles from one layer to another so zoom in and then activate another layer so we don't get that path around the shape and that looks really good to me let's just move the bird into position using the control dragging trick to temporarily invoke the move tool and we'll place him on top of the O in zoo now if you're seeing the bird in front of the text when you're needing to be seeing him behind it essentially for our effect then just go ahead and change the order of the layers in the layers panel by dragging it down the stack until we're at least below the text layer and then select any other layer to remove the path around the bird and I think you'll agree that looks much better hit control or command zero on the keyboard to fit the image to the available space on screen and we now have our final effect for this video Coming up next, we're going to be looking at applying filters to the custom border around the image.